and monsters. They exist among us, and sometimes they win. Even the devil was an angel once. The world has its own rules, and these rules are not human. Some of us seek answers to the origin and existence of cryptids and the unexplained. Join us as we venture beyond the known and accepted boundaries. Welcome to our nightmare. I think you're going to like it. Hey folks, good evening and welcome to another episode of Fans of Monsters Radio where we explore the strange and the unexplained. I am your host, Lon Strickler, and thanks for joining us. Now, if you enjoy our content, then please subscribe, like, and share our presentations. And please feel free to comment. Uh, we want to hear what you got to say and uh, you know, read what you have to say. And uh, we, th we think that's important. And uh, Super Chat's active during the show. So uh, please show your support for Fans of Monsters Radio by clicking the dollar icon underneath the chat. You can also support the channel by using the Buy Me a Coffee link or banner. Your consideration is much needed and appreciated. So tonight, I present Dogman Experiencer Matt Hurriak and the Fams of Monster Fortune Research team member, researcher, and writer Timothy Renner. Now, Matt's sighting happened on April 30th, 2022 in Birdsboro, Pennsylvania, in the Birdsboro Preserve. Now, this area is just north of the French Creek State Park, and the forests intersect with one another. Uh, there's roughly 15 to 20 square miles of dense natural woodland in this area. It's one of the largest forest areas in southeastern Pennsylvania. Now, Matt and his 12-year-old daughter were fishing at Hay Creek when they observed a gruesome cryptid canine in the trees across the quarry from them. Matt will describe in detail the incident, which was a harrowing and life-changing event. Uh, Phantom's Monsters 14 research team is actively investigating this incident. So, Matt and Tim, thanks for coming on tonight. Thanks for having me. Always good to be with you, Lon. Okay. Thanks, thanks Tim. It's great to have you on again. So Matt, how you doing? Good, good, really. Good. Yep. So, uh, well, I guess I guess what we're going to do is just have you tell tell everybody from the beginning what happened. Okay. Uh, I, I will be honest with you. This is one of the craziest uh, cryptic canine encounters <laughs> sightings that I've heard, sure. uh, and especially by the descriptions. And then Vince is going to put up some of the uh, some of the graphics and stuff in your <laughs> sketch later on. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so go ahead and, and tell us what happened. Okay. So, uh, April 3rd, 30th, uh, my daughter wanted to go fishing and, uh, it was a beautiful spring, spring day. Um, and it had rained like two weeks in a row. So the creeks were kind of high. So I wanted to take her out. She wanted to learn how to wade in semi-fast water so i was like all right well we'll go to hay creek because it's a it's a pretty safe creek the water's not really um you know too violent and it's not too deep so um i was like okay you know let's let's grab the rods and we'll go up so we get up there that was around maybe 11 30 somewhere in there and it's about a, a it's about a 35 minute walk it's about a mile and a half up in there and um it, this is called Hay Creek Road, which was the old um, Route 82. So uh, back in uh, 80, 1986, it was shut down when uh, Andrew had come up through and uh, knocked the bridge out. So they just made it into a preserve. So the old road is still there, but it's never been, uh, you know, repaired or whatever. So we were up... There's two quarries uh, in the preserve, which um, there's a big active quarry and then there's an inactive quarry. So 
we had crossed the Hay Creek and we went up on the other side. Uh, we're maybe quarter mile past the um, um, quarry and we settled in and we started fishing. And uh, just to give you a general picture, everybody and their grandmother was outdoors that day because, you know, it was a long winter. It was damp and there's hikers, there's mountain bikers, there's people on horse, horses that have a horse trail up there, you know, so a lot of people walking in, you know, walking in and about around. So um, we were fishing for maybe about an hour, hour and a half. And um, all of a sudden I heard what sounded like a tree falling over. Now the quarry was working till around two o'clock. So this is probably about 1230-ish, you know, one o'clock when we were up there. And uh, it's, it sounds like a tree, you know, falling over. And, uh, but it keeps going. It's like, it's like something, you know, it's, it's just repeating. This sound goes on for about almost two minutes. And I stand up, you know, I'm looking around, I'm like, man, you know, this is really odd. And it's fairly close. It, it's within, you know, a hundred, hundred or so feet from us. So, um, my daughter was in the stream, so she was fishing. She couldn't really hear it because of the fast water. So, but it was loud. I mean, it, it sounded like a, a big Douglas fur coming down, you know, over it. But it was unusual because there was no um, chainsaws, you know, there was nothing as far as this crashing sound. So I, I was a bit like, you know, startled and I'm like, okay, whatever. So I couldn't see nothing. So I was like, okay, whatever. And, and you know, we continue fishing. So it was about an hour, I don't know, an hour and a half. I hear it again. Now, this time it's a little bit closer, but it's a little bit longer in length. It was about two and a half minutes. And now, you know, I'm, I'm standing up. I mean, being in the woods, being an avid outdoorsman all my life, uh, you know, hunting, fishing, been in national parks, been all around uh, state forests, national forests, and, and Never, never heard anything like this. So I, I was a bit, you know, concerned and puzzled as far as, you know, what this was. So uh, I was like, all right, and again, I, I couldn't see nothing. I, I just hear, you know, like like a tornado in a tree. I mean, that's what it sounded like. <laughs> it, it, it did. It sounded like a, like a freight train coming through, you know, the forest, but I don't see anything. So I'm like, okay, whatever, you know, <laughs> I'm like, okay, try to make sense of that. So I said to my daughter, I says, well, let's go down and, and we'll try some calmer water and we'll, uh, we'll sit. The stream kind of widens out and, you know, it's nice, clear. So we start walking down and um, we get into this spot just maybe 45 minutes later. You know, we've been there at least a half hour, 40 minutes later. And I hear it again. Now, this time it's even closer. So now I'm, I'm like, what the crap is going on here? So, you know, I can't see anything, but I hear this. It sounds like a 747 crashing through the forest. I'm like, what? You know, something's totally out of whack here. So at this point, I'm, I'm, I'm very alarmed because I'm like, okay, you know, I've, I've never experienced anything like this um, ever. Um, and it's, it, it's, it's just, you know, repeating every so many hours or whatever. And yet I can't see nothing. So I said to my daughter, I says, okay. I said, let's go down and we'll cross the street and we'll go down on the main part of the old road and we'll, um, we'll fish down there. And it's closer down towards the, the, the park where there's more people, or whatever. And I wasn't even scared. I mean, you know, I, I thought, okay, maybe, you know, it, it was early spring. I thought, okay, maybe a bear was down in there or, you know, something like that. Or, um, But that particular last time, uh, we were right near the horse trail. Now, the horse trail is about 30 feet above us from the stream level. But there were horses that were coming up. And when the sound hit or, or started, it kind of rattled the one horse. The, the horse kind of like, you know, was startled. And um, so I, I noticed that. And uh, But like I said, you know, I stood up again. And this is to my back from the stream. So this is now the third time that 
that, that, I, that I've heard this and, and I can't see anything. So we start co coming down um, to the lower end of the big quarry, would be the southern end of it, and we're, we're traveling north. And the stream's probably about 40 foot wide, roughly there. And it's it, it's really high, you know. Um, it, it's up to my knees, so it's almost up to my daughter's waist when she's 12. So as we start across the stream, all hell breaks loose, like right above us. Now, we're about 20 feet down in the creek level to get up to the bridge. It's about 10 feet. And then you go up this little embankment up, up to the thing or up to the road level. And keep in mind, there's no leaves on the trees. They're just starting to bud. And uh, so, you know, I can see pretty far, you know, through the canopy like this whole time. And yet I see nothing. So it takes us about 45 seconds, um, you know, maybe a minute to get across the stream. I, I'm going first. I have, I'm holding her by her hand. And um, all of a sudden, you know, it, it, it's really close now. And as I come up the embankment, it's like a little burn. So it's probably about a six foot thing. And it's kind of, you have to like go up and then you have to go turn 90 degrees and then get up on the road level. So I get up first and I had to ride and stuff. And I, I just look back because now, now it seems really close to me. So I kind of flinched and looked back. And as I'm looking back, as I have my daughter's arm to help her up, I see movement out of my peripheral vision. So I turn back and I look and I'm, I'm startled, but I can't see nothing. You know, I saw this out of, out of my peripheral vision. So I'm looking and I'm looking on the side of the quarry. This is about 150, maybe 200 feet max. So all of a sudden I'm focusing in on, you know, the direction of the sound and I see this pine tree just going back and forth like this. This is a 40-foot pine tree. It's all the way up at the very tip of the pine tree. And I said to my daughter, I said, what the heck is that, you know, up in the tree? I said, look. So this thing's swaying back and forth probably at least three to five feet, you know. And branches are breaking, stuff's flying out. I'm like, what is going on? So at first I thought, okay, maybe maybe an eagle, you know, got got a bird or something, or you know, was, it, some predator was up in there, whatever. All of a sudden, I see this black thing fly out of the tree, and I see an arm come up, and it knocked it down. It didn't grab it, but it knocked it down, and this thing sways back and it jumps. This creature jumps from one tree to another. Now, I, I think it was an oak tree. It was, you know, it had a big canopy on it. And I was just in total disbelief because when this thing jumped, this is probably a good six to eight feet, maybe even more from that tree onto the other tree. So it kind of goes like down in the canopy, but then it starts climbing on the outside of the canopy, almost like, it's sort of like it defied physics, you know, and, and imagine, you know, <laughs> you're, you're seeing this and you're like, okay, bear, mountain lion, you know, doesn't compute, doesn't compute your brains, you know, trying to figure this out. And this is all within, you know, 10, 15 seconds of what you're trying to see. So this thing gets up on top of the canopy. It struggles to get up top, but it's on the top and it's like pivoting almost like a spider, like on a web. And all of a sudden, this thing goes down into the canopy. So I'm like, what the heck? I'm, you know, what, what are we what are we watching here? You know, what are we seeing? Um, it, it just didn't compute. So it's in the tree. Now, keep in mind. You can see in, inside the canopy because the leaves aren't completely on and branches are breaking. And I'm not just talking like little branches. I'm talking big one inch round, um, you know, branches, big, big limbs are just being thrown, you know, like, like twigs out of this tree. It's like a tornado. 
in the tree. And I'm like, whoa, you know, what is going on? All of a sudden, this thing jumps. Now, keep in mind, I'm going to put this in perspective for you. The trees are 40 foot high, at least. Um, and I didn't get back up there to get pictures of it. Um, yeah, but I will. And we can do another thing on that later. But um, on the quarry side of the wall, this is right on the edge of the quarry. So trees are 40 foot high to the ground, you know, on the side of the quarry. And this is right on the top of the, of, of the ridge. Then there's like a 15 to 20 foot incline of rock that's on like a 60 degree angle. So when this thing jumps out, it jumps probably six to eight feet out of the tree, like in length, you know, sideways and falls 60 feet, boom, onto this rock face. Now this rock face is 60 degrees. When it hits, <coughs> I'll never forget the impact because the rock started, you know, I mean, it hit hard. But when it landed, it landed like almost like on all fours, uh, almost like a frog, you know, when it landed, it, it, it landed on all fours like together. And I'm thinking, holy crap, this thing's dead. I mean, this thing just fell the equivalent of about 60 feet at least. And it's laying there. Now, when it fell, it landed with its back towards us on like, I'd say almost like a 45 degree, not quite a 45, but I'd say about between 30 and 40 degrees. I can see its back. I can see its hind legs. I can see its head. Now it's bald from the shoulders up, okay? This thing's laying there. Yeah, that, that's my uh, rendition of what I saw. So <clears throat> this thing stands up. After about, I don't know, maybe six to 12 seconds, <clears throat> and it, it stands up and it rears itself, you know, like it's shaking itself off, like, you know, <laughs> that wasn't fun or whatever, like it was stretching. So I'm like, holy crap, this thing now is on two legs and it's massive. From the heel to the hip, it's at least seven foot. Okay, way taller than me. I'm 6'1". From the hip to the shoulder is another three to four feet. From shoulder to heel, 10 feet. Easy. You know, not even trying. And it's just sit or standing there uh, in a bipedal position. And all of a sudden, it goes down on all fours and it jumps like a frog, this thing jumps at least 20 foot, not even trying, by at least six to eight foot high, and lands on its front, on its front arms. Now, when it stands up, um, now, well, before it stood up, it, uh, now remember, this is on a 60 degree incline that it's on its rock face, and it's running almost parallel to me and my daughter to the left. We saw it on the right hand side, and as it fell, it you know, I'm seeing the back of it the whole time. No tail, it looks like a gorilla, or you know, almost like a Sasquatch or Sabe, whatever you call it, Bigfoot. But it's got human like hands. I'll never forget the hands on it because when it landed on all fours, now this thing had a bird under its arm, and it also had a bird that it was holding. So when it landed on all fours, the one bird in its left hand fell out and was rolling down the um, 60 degree incline rock face. So I'm like, <coughs> holy crap, you know, I, I'm totally frozen. I don't know what this thing is. So <coughs> it reaches out with its left hand and it turns its head to the side. So now I have a full side view of the head. And I'm like, whoa, it's got a human-like head, but it has like a canine upper jaw. The, the lower jaw was like a human's, but um, the upper jaw looked like more like a hyena, not a full-grown snout like a bear has or a, um, um, a dog has. But 
almost like in between, like a you know a hyena has the shorter, shorter uh, jaw. So it's got canine fangs. They're at least, I'd say, three to five inches in length. I mean, this thing looked like a werewolf right out of Harry Potter. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, um, so I'm just in total disbelief. Then it stands up again by Peter after it grabs, you know, the um, this bird, and it stands there and it looks around, never turning around towards me. It never saw us, and this thing starts running like a like an Olympic track runner running over hurdles, and each stride is at least fifteen feet, not even trying. And it covered probably 200 yards in a matter of seconds and then disappeared into the brush. So it's, it's, it's running on almost a 90 degree, not quite, I'd say more like a 75 degree angle away from us and then crashes in through the, uh, the woods. And I'm like, holy crap, what did I just witness here? You know, I, I'm in total... I'm in total disbelief. I'm in a total state of shock. And I'm like, okay, um, does not compute. And for the first time in my entire life, I, I had, I don't know if it was a panic attack or an anxiety attack, whatever. I, I, I started like shaking. I'm like, whoa, dude, you know, what, what was this? You know, what, what's going on here? This just defied everything I know about the wilderness, you know, nature. I'm like, this thing should not exist. And I just saw this thing. And my daughter's like, Dad, you know, what, what was that? And I said, I have no idea. I'm at a loss of words. And she goes, that was no bear. She, she said, <laughs> I don't know what that was. So I'm standing there for like two minutes just trying to get my composure together, you know, to, to figure out what the heck this thing is. And I've come to the realization now that I got to go the exact same way this thing ran because I got to get back to my truck, which is probably three quarters of a mile down, down, uh, you know, old Hay Creek Road there. So the whole time I'm thinking, all right, this thing was violent. I mean, this thing was not friendly. This thing ripped them trees apart and I'm, I'm not talking small little trees. I mean, this thing was breaking limbs at least two inches in diameter, snapping them off and, you know, throwing them, you know, just, just throwing them. The hands, I, I, I'll give you dimensions as far as the arms. The arms were just as long as the legs, if not longer. The hands, um, I would say almost, I'm thinking probably at least two foot in digits, wow. you know, uh, from palm to the, to the fingertips. And it had three inch claws, you know, at least. The feet, um, like I said, when this thing first fell out of the tree, um, that's a pretty good uh, rendition of, of the hands on it. Uh, it was about that long. Uh, the thing that struck me though, was how skinny this thing was. Um, and when I came home, I, I wrote all kinds of detailed notes down so I would so I wouldn't forget it. And it was almost like it was anorexic, uh, or, or it had been in hibernation. Um, the head was completely bald from from the shoulders up. Uh, the skin was like a light gray. I don't know if you ever seen Lord of the Rings, uh, the uh, orcs. The exact same color skin. I'll never forget that skin. Uh, and the weird thing was, was it had the placement of the ears was not like a canine or like a regular dog man uh, to where they, were, you know, it was on top of the head. This was exactly where a human's ear would be, but they were pointed almost like an elf. You know, Drew. And uh, yeah, I mean, just totally insane. I mean, well, let me uh, let me ask let me ask let me ask um, Tim. Tim, have we ever or you ever heard anything like this before? I I mean, <laughs> not exactly like this for sure. Like this is this is combining a lot of really interesting things. Like 
So it's massive. That's a good picture right there. Massively tall. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, like this. So, you know, I guess with the head, you're talking, what, 12 feet, something? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 10, 10 to 12 feet. That That is almost, that is very close. Wow. Uh, yes. That, that, that right there is almost perfect. Same skin color. The only thing that was different was the lower jaw was um, a little shorter, almost like a human's. It didn't have lower fangs, but it had canine fangs on the top, um, you know, like that. But the, the nose wasn't, it was lower. It was a little bit lower, almost to like, I would say, just above above it's like cleft palate there but very i mean that's that's 90 percent right there wow easy, easy. yeah so, <laughs> so no, hair, no hair on its head but hair on its body uh yes it had it had hair um it was like uh i wouldn't say it was fur it almost reminded me of um a winter coat on a horse you know how they get like that shaggier Mm -hmm. you know, uh, almost like a wool type thing. It was like that. Now it had, this thing was older. Uh, it was an older animal. I could tell because it had gray on the shoulders and just on the back of its neck. But, you know, from probably here from, from its, uh, 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 what do you call these? The lats or, or your, uh, whatever this is called here, muscle wise, it was bald. Um, but it had black, it had black fur, and then it had um, it had like brown spots and silver spots. Like the elbows were like a silverish color, um, and uh, it didn't have markings. Um, I messed up when I drew my drawing. I was using a marker for muscle uh, definition, so that the black marks were, were, were muscle tone. The arms were really skinny. The forearms were, were kind of developed though. Uh, you know, um, more muscular. There you go. Um, uh, the arms are, are pretty accurate. And then it had really wide lats and shoulders. But again, this thing was really skinny. It was like sickly, you know. Um, but I mean, the way the thing moved, um, it moved like a praying mantis with a cheetah with an ape, you know. Uh, it was spectacular to, to see this thing move and i mean imagine you know imagine seeing this happen in front of you this thing falls 60 feet and gets up i mean I, I, did you I, hear it hit when it landed did you hear it hit oh my god yeah I, i'll never forget that sound i mean it was just a boom and rocks started tumbling down but you know i said to myself i was like any normal creature this thing would be dead right i mean it was laying on i mean it was laying flat and I thought, holy crap, this thing's dead. And the thing got up after about, you know, nine to 12 seconds. And I'm like, holy crap, you know, what? what is this? Uh, so, you know, it took me two minutes just to get my composure again. Sure. So, so you know, then, <laughs> then, I, then, then I come to the realization, I got to go the exact same way this thing came or, or went. And... Uh, and I'm, I'm trying to look around. The only other option is to climb the 30 foot steep embankment to get up to the, to the horse trail, to get out of there, to go around the back way. Cause I mean, I didn't know what this thing was, you know, I still don't know what it is, you know, after all this research. Um, so my first, my first uh, cognitive, you know, smart train of thought is, Hey, you know, this thing's violent. I don't know what we're dealing with here. You know, I got to warn somebody. So I actually start to dial 911 because, you know, I'm like, <laughs> that would have been interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, seriously, you know, I'm like, holy crap, you know, I got to warn people, hey, you know, this thing's violent in the trees. What's it going to do if, if it comes across a human? I mean, a, a polar bear will be disintegrated by this thing in a matter of seconds. I mean, the violence, I mean, this thing was not friendly. It was not friendly at all. And, and you know, I, I'm, 
I'm slowly walking down and I'm on like hyper survival alert mode. And I'm like, okay, you know, that there's train cars there. I mean, this thing could be hiding anywhere along, you know, that path to ambush someone. You know, I'm, I'm just thinking on the realization here of, of what this is. So I dial 9-1 and I'm like, dude, nobody's going to believe a word, you know. Yeah, but, I wouldn't believe it. You know, but, but you know, it, people are going to look at you like, dude, what's this guy on or, you know, whatever. So the whole time I'm in conflict, uh, I want to try and, you know, I'm like, okay, do I call state police? Do I call local police? And I'm fidgeting with my phone as I'm walking down. My daughter's behind me. She's my number one priority, you know, to keep her safe. And, I mean, I, I don't have a gun on me. All I got is a little pocket knife. You know, I mean, dude, forget it. Game over. I mean, just bend up, <laughs> you know, bend down on your knees and pray <laughs> because you're done. And, you know, so long story short, it, it took us maybe a half hour to walk back. And there were there were two other people that I saw coming up. And uh, the one the one kid had uh, earbuds. And I'm like, yo, I'm like, did you see any, you know, you see any creatures coming through here? And they're like, no, nah, man, you know, they looked at me like, OK, well, you know, what's this guy doing? You know? So I get back, I get back down this truck and I'm literally shaking. I'm like, Oh my God. You know, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I made it back. And so there is a police cruiser coming through and I'm like, okay, you know, I'm debating the whole time. I'm like, dude, I gotta, I gotta tell somebody about this because I mean, this thing is, is not friendly. You know, I don't know what we're dealing with here. And uh, so I started walking up and I was like, now nah, just, 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 just go to the truck. And I sat in the truck for about five minutes, uh, just, just uh, trying to make sense of, of what I, you know, what, what my daughter and I witnessed. And, uh, you know, those 40 to 50 seconds, whatever it was, uh, changed my life forever. Um, I mean, I'm it, yeah. Well, it doesn't sound like anything that I have had ever had a report for. To be honest yeah. with you, um, it's hard to even tell. I mean, uh, Nancy asking if it's a difference between this beast and the pale crawlers. I mean, it, you think it's possible that it may have been something similar to that? It, it, you know, I, I I've done probably over a thousand hours of research on all this stuff. I mean, I, I you know, I, I never wanted this, uh, you know, I'm just bringing this to the masses. I don't care what people think or say. A lot of people are, are, uh, you know, intimidated. They're scared to come on because of ridicule. Listen, man, to all you people out there, I saw this thing and it's real and I will get answers one way or another. And, no. uh, you know, it's, it's, I, I, I've looked at a, a paleo, um, what do you call it? Uh, paleo anthropology. I mean, I've been reading stuff online. I got like six computers up in my office here that I'm doing, you know, I'm doing U.S. geological survey, terrain data, and all this stuff. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm blazing, you know, on every little thing that, that I can remember just to educate myself to even try to begin to make sense of what I see. Now, you know, I, the, I, one thing I, the one thing I got to say is, and I don't know what you think about this, Tim, is but of any cryptid that we've ever had an, a description of or anybody's had an encounter with, this one probably has more supernatural possibilities to it than anything I've ever heard. What do you think, Tim? Yeah, I'm, I, I, for me... You know, it's hard to imagine there's a, a breeding population of whatever this is. Absolutely. You know, yeah, I agree. I mean, I mean, I, you know, I, I'm I, I didn't sleep. I, I'm not I'm not going to lie. I, I didn't sleep for almost three days straight. I mean, I was so yeah, weird. Out. I mean, I know what I saw. Uh, I mean, I went on I went on the PA Game Commission website. I went on the DNC, or DCNR. I mean, I went on the, all kinds of different things, you know trying to look at, you know, apex predators and PA, you know, trying, trying to go from a scientific standpoint 
Yeah, I can tell you one thing. The Pennsylvania uh, Game Commission has no record of something like that. <laughs> and if they did, they wouldn't tell you. Uh, so what, I mean, yeah. they wouldn't even tell you there's mountain lions in the state, let alone one of these things. Yeah, and, and, you know, so, so I reached out to Native Americans as well. Yeah. Uh, I'm in the process of meeting with uh, five different tribes in three different states. Um, I have, uh, you know, contacts for that. Uh, and, you know, I, one of the Native Americans that I did talk to said that they think it was a skinwalker that I yeah, see. Yeah, well, of course you're going to get that. Yeah, but you know, gonna think, somebody's going to think it's either either some type of uh, some type of witch or, or uh, <laughs> some type of shapeshifter or some type of spiritual being. Yeah, uh, I mean, I you know, as, as far as any tribes or remnants of tribes that were in this area, I don't know. There, you know, of any Lenny Lenape or Delaware Tim that have any uh any standing around here yet or in this area yeah it's so hard i mean people ask me this all the time yeah you know, what, what what did the native americans in your area you know believe about this stuff and it's just like wow I yeah mean, yeah it, know, it, they, it's almost no yeah. i mean yeah, the, la the last the last tribe that was in this area was the shawnee and they moved off and or all moved off and yeah. You know, even the Susquehannock and all the, the strange ritual stuff that they had, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. We lost we lost their language, a bunch of less sure. folklore. We don't we don't know what they believed really. Yeah. Um, Matt, before this happened, yeah, what were your your just general feelings on like say Bigfoot Sasquatch? Did had you even heard of Dogman, etc.? Um I I I had a strange encounter in nineteen ninety one. Uh, hunting up in uh, Bradford County. Uh, actually, yeah, Bradford. Um, and uh, now, I didn't see it, but I had five doe come down and stand, like, right next to me, which is uh, highly unusual as far as hunting. Uh, this was the second day of buck season, and uh, we, were, we were probably about six miles from the New York border, and now, I had heard something coming through. It sounded big, but I never officially saw it. You know, you, you, you hear about, you know, how, how the smell, you know, um, you know, smells right, right. You know, super bad. Um, now, I did smell that, but as far as the Bigfoot, you know, hey, I, I, I've always had an open mind, you know. Um, being a technical guy, you know, myself, I learned, I learned you know, very, very – from a very young age that if you have an open mind, you're going to learn 20 times more, you know, than, mm -hmm. than somebody that, that doesn't. So, you know, I, I had heard a dog, man. I, I never really you know, did the research on it. Um, and I, I watched like Les Strauss and, you know, the big mm -hmm. stuff like Monster, yeah, yeah. stuff like that. And yeah, Hey, you know, I was skeptical, but you know, I, I, I was like, well, you know, the history, you know, every single indigenous tribe, in North America, including Canada and even Mexico, they have, you know, they have names for this stuff over a millennia. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think they do exist. And, and you know, well, even I'd like though, to know what the name, what their name for this thing is, because I, quite frankly, I've never even heard of anything like this. I mean, this would come close, wouldn't even come close to a Wendigo or anything like that. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, 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 you know, again, I, um, I looked at uh, the crawler stuff. You know, like all. You know, I'm just learning all this. You know, I was like, well, let me ask you this. So we got some questions in, in the chat. Yeah. Uh, some of these are interesting. Nancy asking, this is something that we've talked about before with orbs and lights. Did you see anything like that at any time? No. Nothing. nothing. No. I mean. Yeah. It is have you had any paranormal activity since this encounter? No. Nah. Nope. Interesting. Yeah. Now, I mean, I, I lived in a haunted house. Uh, it was actually in Berks County's uh, most haunted areas. Uh, and that was, you know, 15 years before. And we saw some crazy, strange stuff. I uh, never saw any ghosts, but we saw things move, you know, that were like typical paranormal stuff. But, I mean, as far as general, no. I mean, I, I, 
I actually had a, a few friends in high school who were who practiced that witchcraft of stuff, and I was like, you know, I, I was raised Roman Catholic, so you know, I didn't believe any of that. Never really wanted to mess with it. You know, I was, if it didn't have a motor on it, I wasn't interested in it. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm an adrenaline junkie and a and a machinist by trade, and you know, I like all that kind of stuff. So I never, you know, I, I've heard about it, and um, you know, I never. I never ridiculed anyone because, you know, I mean, there's stuff out there that that people don't know what it is. You know, I mean, every year that they find new new species, they find new new things. And, uh, you know, it, it's been an incredible journey for me to try and figure out, you know, what I saw. And I'm not afraid. I mean, I know what I saw. Um, did you did you notice the eyes at all? Were, were they? Were you able to get a close enough look at the eyes to tell no. the color? Did you notice no. any other odor on it or anything that that any anything any th other uh, identifying no. or aspect of it that you know was kind of unusual? I, I I never saw the eyes because, like I said, you know this is about a hundred feet away and. Yeah, um, you know, being a machinist and and you know, and manufacturing engineer, you, you know, doing all that stuff, I, I I can scale stuff pretty good because uh, when this thing was running up the um, across the quarry after you know it had landed on this rock bed, uh, which again was a sixty degree angle. I mean, this thing's walking right along that rock bed all around, you know, that same level, and then it jumped up, and when it jumped up. Um, you know, there was a 55 gallon drum that was sitting up on, I guess it was like a, a roadway or an entrance, you know, down. And I'm like, holy crap. I mean, that thing, you know, that 55 gallon drum looks small. And then there was a, like a little piece of equipment. It was like a hydraulics thing or whatever. So, you know, I kind of, I'm just estimating, but I was, I wasn't up close on this thing. I mean, it was a good hundred feet away, you know, so I, I didn't get a good look at its at its uh, you know eyes. I mean, I, mm -hmm. I was far away. You know, yeah, so. I, I think that might be one of the last things I looked at. But I, you know, yeah, especially if your daughter's there. I mean, you're you're yeah, absolutely, that's a, yeah. That yeah. that's what yeah. I was thinking. Yeah. Well, you know, what was her reaction to it? Oh, I, I mean, she, you know, she's like, Dad, what was that? You know, and I mean, being being in the woods. I mean, I've been in national parks. I mean, I've you know, I I white water rafted. Uh, you know, the Great Smoky Mountains for 10 days. I mean, and never, you know, I, I've been 60 miles deep in, in that in that park, you know, years later. Never, never had the fear of the woods. I mean, um, I saw a bear, you know, fishing in PA, you know, nine times out of 10, unless they got cubs, they're going to run the other way. You know, I, yeah. I know what bear are. I mean, I've seen bear from an early age. My uncle had a cabin up in Sullivan County, and they used to, the game commission used to put uh, road kills out in the back. Well, you know, the bears would come in and scavenge it, so we would sit there and spotlight with them, you know, you know spotlight them. So, you know, I mean, this thing, again, you know, imagine the shock, you know, you're standing there. This thing's only 100 feet away from you. And, you know, I, <clears throat> I'm trying to make sense of what I'm looking at. I'm like, okay, is this a bear? You know, it, 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 your mind goes through. I'm like, bear, gorilla, sure, uh, yeah. mountain lion. You know, it's like, no, no, no. And and then, you know, you see this thing fall out of the tree, you know, and I thought it was dead. I mean, you know, I, I, I just couldn't believe it. That's what really scared me then. I'm like, whoa, what the freak? This thing just got up. I mean, you know, anything that uh, even a bear falling sixty feet is going to be injured. Mm -hmm. that, that's unusual. I mean, the, the tree, tree thing in a canine, <clears throat> for one thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. I, that's something that you would expect from maybe a Sasquatch or a big cat or something. Right. But as as far as you know, I I don't you know I've heard a lot of descriptions of these cryptid canines, and I can't I can't even remember. Anything about being in a tree associated with one of these things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and 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 you know that's um, throughout my journey. You know, th through the research, I I just I just wrote down everything that I could 
remember about it. And one thing that I thought was startling about it, 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 it this thing looked like it was sickly, you know, like mm-hmm. I said, like it, like it hibernated. It was, it was very skinny, but strong, fast. I mean, I, I couldn't believe, you know, I, it, 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 it's still hard to even comprehend, you know, what this was. So I, just on, you know, on a, on a wing and a prayer, I, I started doing research and I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to go into the U.S. Geological Survey here and just start doing the subterranean, you know, see if there's mines, caves, you know, all this stuff. Well, I found out some really interesting data as far as multiple areas. And uh, I, I, I know I had texted you on about this and Tim, I talked to you, you know, a little bit on it. There is karst areas in a lot of these sightings. Um, and since I've been on YouTube and, you know, researching different dog man forms and stuff like that, people give locations. So I go in and I do terrain data and there's five positive things that keep coming up in these areas. One is there's limestone springs or, or karst areas that have subterranean features to where there's a possibility of uh, you know, underground caverns, a den or something like that, outcrops. Um, the interesting thing is there's a north-south ridge in a lot of these places, you know, like down in Kentucky, Tennessee, you know, there's some of these sighting areas that I've found online. Not only that, um, even up in New York and, and PA, that those patterns keep coming up every single time, you know, to where I can get a, a, a definitive area on that. So does that have something to play, you know, uh, with that? I don't know. You know, like you're saying, you know, there has to be a breeding population. You know, the one thing, the one thing that really fascinates about this and about this and the location is this is right behind Butch's house. I mean, yeah. basically. I mean, this this was where Butch did his research. Yeah, and and you know, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I mean, it's just bizarre. It is bizarre. I, I mean, you know, I, I I didn't sleep for three days. I mean, literally, I was I was like, dude, what what did I just witness here? Have so, you been, have you been back to the area, Matt? Yeah, yeah. I, um, me and a friend of mine went up. Uh, and, uh, you know, we were we were kind of leery because, you know, um, Eric, Eric Mantel and, um, you know, Lana said about doing an investigation. And, you know, hey, I don't know what this thing would do if, if you would come face to face with this thing. You know, it didn't see us. I know that for a fact. And, you know, I even <laughs> I was even yelling like, holy crap, you know, and, you know. When I got back to the truck, I was like, why did you make that sound? I mean, right. there was real danger that this thing could have, you know, if it was sauce, it, it could have killed us. I mean, and and I just, I, I'm still at a loss of words. I, I really am. Could you tell what kind of birds it had under its arms? Um, yeah, it was, uh, I thought maybe it was wild turkeys, but they were turkey buzzers because the exact tree where we had gone back up, the exact tree where this thing was in, there was a turkey buzzard's nest in there. Mm. And my friend even said to me, he goes, look, there's turkey buzzards in that tree. And I said, you're right, because they would, they would, you know, come, come and go. But, you know, it makes sense now because I wrote all this stuff down. And when I heard the sounds, that's what it was doing. This thing was in the trees. It was chasing some type of a bird. At first, I thought it was an eagle. Uh, because, you know, it's early spring and there's migration. You know, I, I thought maybe eagles were coming in, and, you know, get, getting some hawks or, you know, predators. But, you know, when this, when I saw this alarm come out, you know, I, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And then it jumped from that tree to the other tree. I mean, it just, it just totally defied everything that I knew. I mean, you know, <laughs> I, 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 I was just completely dumbfounded and still am. So, you know, slowly but surely, I'm trying to trying to put things together to, uh, you know, put pieces to the puzzle, see, you know, what this thing is, number one. Number two, and, you know, I, 
it was kind of weird because the skin was so pale on it. Um, it was, you know, I, I, mean, I don't know if it was hibernating because it was so skinny or if it's subterranean, you know, I, I don't know. So that's, that's where I've been focusing. You know, Richard made a good, made a good point here. <clears throat> what does a supernatural creature need to eat turkey buzzards or anything, eat anything for that matter? Exactly. Um, I don't know, you know, but you know, when you think about this, I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. I can't even imagine something like this would even be on this earth plane to, right. to be without able to a, breed. Without us knowing about it, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I agree 100%. I, I mean, you know, I, I I was just like, dude, this thing exists. I mean, I seen it. I know what I saw. Um, I mean, I went through... I was on the game commission site for probably 17 hours straight, um, you know, Sunday trying, trying to figure out, okay. At first I thought it was a bear with mange or, you know, something like that, but it was too big. I mean, yeah. black bears, I mean, this thing, it, 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 it's, it's just insane. It, it, it truly is. And, you know, I, I, I'm bringing it out to you guys because I know what I saw and, you know, I, I don't know. I <laughs> well, I mean, like I said before, this is this isn't even near anything that we've ever heard about before. Yeah. I mean, we've heard some crazy things, but I, I, this is just. I know. I mean, this is um, this is like a mix of so many different type of cryptids. Yeah. Or you know. I, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I mean uh, James wanted to know: Are any abandoned buildings with a mild sighting? I mean, is there any place for this oh, thing yeah. to hide or live at? Oh yeah, oh yeah. There's. I mean, you know, I I think this thing. When I was younger, I was, I was in my teens. We used to go up to Hay Creek and fish all the time, and it was mm -hmm. probably it was probably being 17, 18, almost twenty years, I guess, since I've been up in there. And uh, but yes, there are there are a few abandoned buildings uh, up in that area. Um, but, you know, I, we were actually in the one, you know, on the way up, uh, my daughter was like, Hey, what's that? And it was an old, it was an old maintenance, you know, building. It, it, it's all falling over and there's a lot of junk and debris and stuff. So I, I didn't really want to go into it, you know, but, yeah. we just, you know, but well, you think something like this would have to be going someplace very deep underground or a cave or, well, that's the thing. I mean, I mean, yeah. uh, I, you know, I've been on Google Earth, you know, looking because this thing is not going to live in the woods. I mean, it would stick out like a sore thumb at, at how big it was. So, you know, I, me and my buddy went flying a few weeks back and, uh, you know, we went up over that area. Well, the, the leaves are still on it. So I have a friend who uh, is going to get me um, Google Pro Earth um, or Google Earth Pro. And we're going to go through and do that. So when the leaves go uh, come completely off, we're actually going to do some low altitude flying for several hours, and we're going to we're going to go up and down the east west ridges and uh, you know look for outcrops or anything in there. And you know, um, Burke or uh, Chester County. Now, I've done this research too. I'm not the only one who has seen this. Um, because the, uh, there's been sightings since 1975 uh, of a similar creature, which, you know, I guess it's been labeled a dog man or whatever. So I'm just trying to label it as a dog man. Well, I mean, yeah. specifically, we've had all kinds of different sightings. But as yeah. far as this thing, I, I'll be honest with you, I've never heard anything like this. Yeah. And, and you know, again, I'm just trying to. Can we get these hyena type of creatures, quadrupeds, bipeds, mostly quadrupeds? Uh, we get these things that look like the the lichen creatures from the, uh, the underworld movies, and you know, nine, well, ten foot tall things. I mean, <laughs> that's I mean, what this is like a nightmare compared to those things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was similar, you know. The, um, I've, I've never seen a crawler and, and, you know, I'm just taking bits and pieces of, of, of all these cryptids to say, okay, can I specifically 
um, you know, definitively um, identify what this is, you know. Um, so, you know, it's, but it has that subterranean um, look to it, you know, almost like, uh, almost like a crawler. But, I mean, this thing had fur. I mean, it was a physical being. I mean, it wasn't like, you know, it's, I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's totally no, it's I mean, it's corporeal, so, I mean, you know, you heard it, you saw it move, hitting rocks and moving rocks and actually yeah. grabbing a bird or whatever, yeah. and, yeah, yeah, it was doing things that a corporeal a being would do, so you weren't seeing some type of, met, some type of uh, spirit manifestation or some type no, of... No, no, definitely e not. Even, like, a topa or anything like that, I mean, you know... Yeah. I, 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 you know, this whole thing, you know, from the very beginning when I you told me about this and and I started talking to um, to Eric Eric Mentel about it. I mean, it's just like it's crazy. I mean, it is. It is. I mean, I, I, I imagine the person seeing it, and you're like, "Wow, <laughs> okay." Throw everything you thought you knew about the wilderness, and did and, did, it, did you uh, actually did you hear it make any sounds, growls, or anything like that? It it kind of grunted. Um, um, when, when after it fell, it was laying out. I was like, Whoa! you know, it was like yeah. I'm grunting. I'd probably grunt too if I fell that far, <laughs> right? Yeah, I, I mean, you if, know, if it had not moved, would you have gone closer, like when it fell? Um, <laughs> probably, yes, I probably would have gone back. Uh, not with my daughter, no, For sure, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. As violent as this thing was, I mean. Yeah, yeah, James. James Ooh. asked about the tail. There was no tail. No, there was no tail. That that I can confirm because when it fell, it landed um, on a forty-five. So, so you know, if I'm here, it would land like this, and I can see you know its whole <sighs> on then uh, its ass, whatever you want to call it, and you know there was no tail at all, none, zero. One other thing you might want to check out when you're checking these like USGS maps and stuff, see if you can find a magnetic anomaly map. I got them. Got them all. I got, is, there, I got, is there a magnetic yes. anomaly there? Yes. Yeah. And it's it's uh, in the 400 range nano Teslas. Yeah. I, somebody sent me a magnetic anomaly map of York County and literally every one of these places I go where, we, where people have had repeat incidents has magnetic anomalies there yeah yeah and and you know the, again that's part of the you know all these sightings as far as now i'm just taking the dog man sightings but every single place of where these things to where there is a d definitive um location given all these same patterns keep coming up so i in my opinion i think there is a science there to say, hey, you know, I think we should be investigating this as well. So, you know, I'm just doing my own research for that. You know, uh, the, the bizarre thing is, is there's always two bodies of water as far as a reservoir, uh, a smaller pond, uh, and there's a river within three miles of, you know, and there's always a park. There's yeah, there. that's one of the things I ask, like, when mm -hmm. I'm called out on, like, Bigfoot witnesses to, to meet them and and so forth yeah. and they give me their encounters one of the things i always ask is where's the nearest creek and i'm trying to like we're in pennsylvania right there's creeks everywhere so well, i don't know if that's really connected but there's always a creek nearby that's you know, there's all like i haven't well, found one yet where they haven't said oh no there's no creek around here but is that well, because we're in pennsylvania or is that because they're around creeks or both you know yeah and, I, I, and we we do have a we do have a a, a kind of um you know, we have a lot of limestone creeks, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of limestone streams, a lot of spring fed. Yeah. Especially in South Central Pennsylvania. Yes. And uh, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe there is something to that. I, I don't know. Yeah. yeah it, it, it's, it's just it's so sort of, odd. It is. I mean, you know, these karst regions um, just keep popping up at every one of these locations. I, I, I've, I've analyzed probably. 120 just in PA you know, uh, now since like 1960s to where I could get a definitive. I mean, I've done thousands of hours of research on this 
you know, I, I, I will get answers some way, somehow. James, James <laughs> West asked, what's the game situation in the area? Well, it's like anywhere else in South Central, even though that's a little further west, that's near Reading. Uh, I mean, there, there, there are some small bear populations in and around the area. Yes. Uh, of course, there's a lot of deer. Uh, but you know what? We've been getting more and more of these canid phenomena sightings in the eastern part of the state in more recent years, especially up in the Poconos. Uh, yeah. There's been a lot of sightings up in the Poconos. Uh, yeah. I know Eric's working on one down in, I guess, Chester County or Montgomery County. Uh, now this is Berks County, uh, yeah. Bucks County. We've had three or four sightings in and around, uh, Dolestown, that area around there. Oh yeah, sure. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, this, you know, when Butch and I started looking into this, we were getting most of the sightings in the central part of the state. Well, I, I'd say from the Allegheny State Forest southeast into like maybe Lancaster County, but sure. just goes a little bit further east than that. And now sure. we're getting all these sightings, especially this year, we're getting all these sightings around on the eastern part of the state. Yeah. It's weird. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm in the process of getting some drones and some high end uh, trail cams. And uh, I'll be, once I find out, good spots to put this stuff in as far as, you know, terrain that I'm looking for, because this thing is not living in the woods. Uh, you know, it could be migrating, but I think there's a den or, you know, because it's too big. It, it, it's way too big. It, it has to be in like a cavern, a cave, uh, you know, <clears throat> a deep ravine, something. Um, <clears throat> and that's, I keep going back to that because, I mean, this thing, I mean, I could be totally wrong. I mean, I, I, I've been reading, you know, uh, zoology stuff. I mean, I, I'm just, I got like 10 different subjects that I'm reading to try and build, build a, 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 a puzzle and put these pieces together, you know. <clears throat> so, I don't know. I mean, so, you know, just, just a little bit of advice. Um, I went through a period where I thought I was going to solve it, you know, the, the, solve the Bigfoot thing. And at yeah. some point I, I realized I'm not, I'm not going to solve this. And <laughs> I, had to, I had to sit down and, and say, you know what, dude, do you still, you know, I was kind of depressed, honestly, about a month really? kind of depressed about it. And I had to sit down and like talk to myself and just say, Hey, are you still interested in it? Do you still like it? Are you willing to accept that you, you're, you might not solve this. So, I mean, I think it's great to look for answers. I'm not telling you not to do that. Look for all the answers you can find, but be yeah. prepared. Like you might not. Oh, hey, I, I agree. You know, yeah. and, and, and uh, you know, I'm I'm keeping an open mind. You know, I've I've had <clears throat> a few friends who have seen UFOs. I've actually seen UFOs. You know, uh, if, if I can say anything with certainty about crypto hunting, if you're out there looking for it, you're not going to find it. Right. It'll no, find you before you find it. Oh yeah, exactly. And so you know, I'm, I'm just. I, you know, I will say your journey looking for it. You're gonna. It's gonna be an interesting journey. For that, you can depend yeah. on. You know, you're yeah. gonna. It, it'll be. Oh. It'll be very interesting. So you, it's it's rewarding even if you don't come up with you know finding the exact answers you you set out for. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm I'm just trying to. I'm just trying to educate myself on you sure. know what yeah. this you know, could and, be and. Wherever it leads, it leads, and I'm, I'm keeping an open mind because you know it, way to you do it. it all the time. You know, uh, people people have these sightings and they don't come forward. You know, and, and they struggle with it. For the rest mm -hmm. of their lives Absolutely. Of their lives. So, Tim, let me ask you this: Let's let's say we go forward on this as a team. What do you suggest we do? Huh. Um. I think can I, can we get around these quarries at night? Uh, well, the preserve closes at night. Um, okay. I'm actually. Are, uh, are the quarries in the preserve? Well, yeah, it's a uh, the okay. quarry. Yeah, the quarry is it borders it, 
Um, and supposedly without permission, you're not allowed in there after dark, but you know, I guess you could go. Well, who runs that? Is it the state county or what? I think it's the Birdsboro, um, municipality that runs the preserve part of it. And then the, uh, state park is, you know, state park service. And uh, yeah, yeah, see, this is where we need Butch because Butch can sweet talk somebody getting in there. Chad and I have had real good luck with state parks. If you just if you're just honest and you tell them, hey, we, we want to be do a night hike. This is we're gonna have two cars. These are the makes of our cars. This is where we're gonna park. Yeah, and we're gonna be in there. Sometimes, not always, sometimes they're pretty reasonable about it. And they're like, okay. Because yeah, for the yeah. most part, state parks, they're happy for you to use, they want you to use the, the resources, you know, they want you to be be there. So um We've we've hiked state parks at night. We just we contact the rangers. We tell them where we're going to be, and they and they say fine. You know, they allow you. Have they allowed you to go into Misho before? At uh, Misho, you can go in anytime you want. Oh, really? Yeah, day day night anytime. You can be there anytime you want. Uh, mm. But but I didn't uh, realize that. But like Cador State Park, we get permission from the from the rangers. We tell them we're going to be there. They, yeah. they and they said that's fine. You know, but we we always let them know because. Uh, we don't want an you know adversarial relationship with them, so that's a possibility. We could we yeah. could ask them. The other possibility is um, just to ask wh whoever else, you know, just and you know, we usually just say we're going. We want to do a night hike. They don't have to know what we're hiking for. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 No, I, I understand. Interesting. I, Interesting. I mean, there's a. I was on the uh, state park um, website, and I was also on the DCNR. In the DCNR, if you have research that you want to do on something, uh, you know, they're very open to volunteers, you know, to do that. So um, I was thinking about reaching out to them and, you know, and then, you know, talking with local law enforcement as, you know, as well and say, hey, look, you know, this is what we want to do and see if we, have, you know. We get you know, we, we have had two, we have had two pale crawler sightings in uh french creek really yeah wow because really? butch was looking into one of them so yes i would like to mm. see if we get in there at night if we get any anomalous lights um around those quarries i'd be surprised if we don't honestly yeah i would be too I, especially be digging down there in the limestone absolutely yeah. Yep. yeah and now with the i you know who can say if it's related but uh, you know, the anomalous lights and these things, they, they, they travel together, you know? Yeah. Um, so that, that'd be one thing I'd definitely like to do. Uh, we could certainly get in there during the day and look around and, you know, just yeah. look for everything we can, can see. But uh, I'm, I'm very curious about the anomalous lights. Um, Matt, you're doing a heck of a job with, with all the, this geological research. I mean, that's, yeah. Oh, yeah. trust me. I, I'm, uh, you know, an interesting thing, I even went online as far as, um, you know, like radioactive, because, I mean, this thing was like sickly looking. It, I mean, it wasn't, it didn't seem healthy to me. Well, you said you checked the radon label uh, levels oh, yeah. in that area too, didn't you? Oh, yeah. I, you know, I, I just started going through, I mean, you know, just wildfire, it, just by dumb luck, I guess it was about a month ago, I was watching about high, hybrid mutant species over in Chernobyl. You know, mm. small, you know, all these different things. And it was like, boom, I'm like, you know what? This thing could be, you know, subterranean, uh, which, you know, I, I'm rolling it out 50-50 chance because, you know, um, I'm thinking what the way this thing looked, I mean, it did not look healthy. It did not look like it saw sunlight or it was nocturnal, you know, but it was really skinny. So I thought, hey, you know what? Let me go in here and check the radon levels for uh, Chester and uh, this area. And Shures could be 73% uh, radon levels in certain wells, the highest in Pennsylvania, actually the country. As wow. far as, and it's right in the same grid area. So, could, you know, there yeah. again, you know, I'm just, I'm just looking at, you know, the USGS website. It's absolutely amazing. It's yeah, yeah. I got I got mine. I got the PA mine maps, uh, interactive maps, right off the internet. I mean, there's mm -hmm. 150 mines, that, and that's just coal mines. Then there's there's ore mines. There's you know silver mines, 
Well, you know, that's something that we had looked at from the very beginning with the coal mines in particular, the, the surface mines and, and then, you know, the caves and stuff, especially down in Cambria County and, and stuff sure. where they had had done some uh, not real heavy duty coal mining, but there are a lot of caves in this state. And um, yeah. I think I think Berks County's got a lot of them too, to be honest with you. I mean, you know, Birch County is a strange county, especially for that for that part of the state, because they do have they do have mountains in that area in in the state in, in that county, uh, and you wouldn't think it, but yeah. they do. They do. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, that's the that's the nice thing about flying. I mean, you know, when we fly all the time, and we, you know, we see that stuff from the air all the time. So you know, that's. Yeah. My next, my next plan of attack is over the winter. While all the leaves are off, I'm going to be going in on Google Earth, finding you know these these deepest ravine areas, and go down the ridges, you know, in Google Earth, and then go back and actually you know fly over those areas, and then uh, so you know, weird. Decisions. Yeah. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm the first thing is I'm thinking of is that '70s movie Trog. You remember that movie? You remember seeing that movie? I don't think I did. Oh my God! You got to see that thing. Yeah, it's Trog T R O G. That one of I one of the wildest moves I ever saw when I was a, when I was a kid. That's the first thing that hit my mind when I I thought about this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't know. This this is it's crazy. Know, it's definitely worth investigating. I mean, I you know we. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is just just so weird. You didn't, you never came up with any tracks or anything like that, did you? No, no. Um, we were actually up. Uh, we were up on top of the hill. We were probably seventy five yards away. Right. And, um, it was just too thick uh, to get down in there. But um, yeah, you know, once the leaves are off the trees and and uh, <clears throat> we can get get back in there. Um, right. I definitely, um, I'm gonna yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't think. Yeah, I think it would probably be best when it's kind of stripped of the leaves. Oh yeah, absolutely, I agree. Yeah, I like, I like to see when I'm out there. I don't like things to be able to get right up there. <laughs> yeah, I don't want anything, anything camouflage or covering itself that big or like that. That's gonna, yeah, yeah it's bad enough. You have to worry about bears and cats, but uh, yeah, yeah, one of these, you know. Believe me, I would rather come across three thousand pound grizzlies than this. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I, yeah. I I know when you called me, it was it was pretty fresh after you saw it, and you, you were pretty upset when you called me. Oh, I was oh. I, I was waked up. I mean, I still <laughs> <wake up>. <laughs> <laughs> You don't understand, man. I, I, I mean, forgot that Joan Crawford was in that movie. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, that's fun. But yeah, uh, I mean, uh, well, and like I said to you at the time, it's you know I have kids. You you put your kids in the equation, and that absolutely makes it so much worse because it's like oh yeah, I mean you know I, I a lot of people ask me like hey you you there's a there's a place we go to see anomalous lights. It's pretty gets pretty creepy, and a lot of people are like hey you you take your wife and kids there. I'm like ah, yeah. yeah. Because it's, it's, it's like it, it gets too weird, and then I'm like, I wouldn't yeah. be able to focus on anything. But like, are you guys okay? You know, like, like I'm exactly. gonna put, put them in the car. You know, because it just it gets too too weird. Have you ever have you ever heard of Brown Mountain down in North Carolina? Absolutely. Yeah, um, I actually knew a guy who did uh, studying down there with the military on what those lights were, and. Uh, they they think it has to do with magnetic friction with the, um, the weather down there as far as like certain times pretty crazy stuff but yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. well there have been so many stories of people going out there f following the lights around and getting lost I mean you know it's yeah. it's a crazy crazy place oh yeah, yeah. I mean yeah. the Cherokee used to talk about it all the time I mean you know they you know that whole area was just yeah. Mm. Well, guys, I tell you what, I, I Matt, I appreciate you coming forward and coming on the show and talking about this. 
Yeah. And and Tim, I appreciate you coming on and help me out and and, and uh, asking questions with Matt. We're going to have to look into this a little bit further uh, yeah. because there's there's something just is not right about this. Yeah. I mean, this is this is a weird case. It really is. I mean, I, I <laughs> it's nuts. Yeah. Okay, guys. Well, thanks for coming on, and uh, you know, keep in touch, and we'll be talking soon. All right, sounds great. Thanks for okay. having me. Okay. Yep. Take care, guys. Yeah. See you. Bye. Now, uh, if you've had a site or encounter report uh, that you'd like to be considered for the personal report show, or even post on Fams and Monsters, you can forward it to my email at lawnstrictorfamsandmonsters.com. Uh, I want to again thank uh, Matt for coming on and for uh, and for Tim to come on as well. This is this is crazy. This is a crazy sighting. Uh, so, uh, like I said, if we do get any follow-ups on any more information, we will definitely post them on the team site, on the on the on the blog, or whatever. But uh, you know, even if we get more, we might even do another show. So, um, uh, and, and thanks to all of you for coming on and watching, chatting, and asking questions. That that's a big part of this as well. Uh, Participation is always welcomed, and uh, your support is all, also welcome. So please like, subscribe, share, and you know add your comments uh, after the show. So um, this Friday, there's I'm not going to be around for over a week because I'm having surgery. So um, uh, Vincent Richardson and Bernadette McDaniel are going to be doing a Halloween show next Friday night. So when we get all the particulars on that, I'll post it up and we'll put it out there, give you plenty of time to see it and all. So uh, that'll be interesting. And also we're, we're going to be taping or recording a, uh, an interview tomorrow with another uh, upright canine, cryptid canine experiencer, this time in West Virginia. So when we do get that recorded and get that all set up, we'll go ahead and post it up on the on the uh, YouTube site as well. So, uh, yeah. So until then, and, and until next Friday, uh, stay healthy and have a safe, enjoyable weekend. Good night.